I accidentally stumbled upon Little Nightmares a while back and it blew me away to how amazing it was, which made me make a 10 reasons to play video about it. As Little Nightmares 2 is round the corner, let's go over Little Nightmares story to recap on what happened and get ready for the sequel. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and here is Little Nightmare Story explained in a nutshell. Before we get into the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and beware, as there will be spoilers ahead. Little Nightmares is an indie looking third person horror game where you assume the role of a little girl called Six who wears a signature yellow raincoat which admittedly looks very good with the game scenery. The bright yellow color pops out from the dark and somber color palettes used in the environments. There's no combat involved in the game, but it's quite possibly one of the most detailed games I've ever played. It's got top-notch contact physics and details, so much attention has been paid to the movements and gestures, which would take me over a few minutes to talk about. But I don't have to, as conveniently, you can watch a video I made previously about Little Nightmares breaking it down in detail. An aspect of the game that makes it one of the best games out there apart from art style, soundtrack, gameplay and enemies is the sheer crypticness of the story to who each character is and what the hell is happening. So without much further ado, let's go over the story. Six, our protagonist, wakes up in a suitcase in a dark room connected to ventilation channels. Sex is a nine-year-old girl who wears a signature yellow raincoat who dreamt about a mysterious woman resembling a geisha prior to waking up. Something you might notice right away is the subtle tilting of the environment from side to side, which reflects on other items present in the environment which roll side to side as well. Armed with only a lighter, Sex traverses through dark and claustrophobic rooms, with exception of large mechanical places with massive chains and staircases. Despite these claustrophobic looking rooms, it's obvious that this mysterious place is designed for much larger inhabitants. As Sex explores further, she encounters small gnome looking creatures which are really skittish and harmless, and usually run away or observe her movements. Sex has the option to hug them if she could manage getting close to them. As traversing further, Six witnesses a large skinny inhabitant who is hanging by the neck, presumably a suicide. Traversing further, Six reaches the prison where children are held prisoners. Six escapes carnivorous leeches that infest the depth of this place and a pair of artificial eyes that turn children to stone if they are exposed to the light long enough. This is when we get our first glimpse of a large blind inhabitant with disproportionately long arms. Fortunately for Six, this man is blind and will only react to sound. Therefore, Six easily can evade him this time. Then soon after, Six experiences her first bout of debilitating hunger when an imprisoned child offers her a loaf of bread. After moving further up, evading some more artificial eyes, she gets to the monitoring room where presumably this inhabitant with large arms monitors the children on their beds, who is also thought to be the prison guard. As Six then traverses through this place, she encounters this man's room, whom we then learn to be a janitor of a presumably much larger society with more inhabitants in. After a while, Six experiences another bout of hunger, falling into the janitor's trap in a cage where he placed some meat in. Six manages to break out of her cage, but makes no effort to save the other captured children. In fact, using one of the cages to jump over and open the door. She then encounters the janitor and runs away from him, ending up in a room filled with shoes, where Six escapes a mysterious monster residing under these shoes. After a tense chase from the janitor and learning a little bit more about his obsession with dolls, Six turns on a TV to distract the janitor, which has a weird nursery rhyme playing. Hey, 
After another close chase, the janitor corners Sex in a room with a half-closed door stuck on a cage. The janitor tries to grab Sex through the gap of the door, but Sex manages to shut the door, severing the janitor's arms. Sex travels further up on an automatic hook where the dead children are wrapped in paper and sent up. In this section, we are presented with a gruesome scene of piles of dead children's bodies wrapped in paper. Six suffers from yet another bout of hunger, at which point she eats a live rat stuck on a mouse trap. Moving further through this place, we witness boxes upon boxes filled with bodies of dead children. Sex then traverses through the kitchen where a grotesque looking chef is preparing food. Soon after, we realize that there are two of these chefs, who seem to be twins. Then finally, we are presented with a washing place where there are plates upon plates making towers, presumably after a huge feast. Sex manages to escape the twins, finding a tiny window which shows us a glimpse of what this place is and who the inhabitants are. We learn that this place is a massive underwater vessel, hence the side-to-side -side movement, which welcomes a multitude of obese guests from a ship. To our horror, Six reaches a Japanese-style restaurant on the higher level, where these obese guests are gorging on piles of meat, presumably from dead children and other animals. This feast is overseen by the geisha-looking woman, who Six dreamt of in the beginning of the game. As Six tries to find the exit, some of these guests try to capture Six and consume her, while majority of them are incapable of standing and usually crawl. At a final pursuit, several guests scramble over each other after sex, but she manages to escape. Soon after escaping these gluttonous, grotesque-looking guests, Sex experiences yet another bout of hunger. This time, a gnome is holding a sausage and offering it to Sex, but instead of the sausage, Sex eats the gnome alive, showing no remorse whatsoever. Now keep this part in mind as we're gonna get back to it in the DLC section. Sex follows the lady up into her quarters, which include a lot of broken mirrors, a hint for the ending. At a final battle, Sex being cornered by the lady, finds an unbroken mirror and holds it against her, which disables the lady. As the lady lies down defenseless, Sex experiences yet another bout of hunger, and you guessed it, she starts eating the lady, starting from her neck. This allows Sex to absorb the lady's magical powers. This time, we take control of a badass Sex with a different camera angle, walking in one line between the obese guests as the guests try to attack her, one by one, she uses her newly absorbed powers and kills them. Sex reaches a staircase which she climbs up and passes through a door into sunlight, while the gnome Sex sucked throughout the game gather and watch her leave. In a post credit scene, Sex is seen by the entrance of the Maw, the underwater vessel, while a foghorn is heard in the distance. There are many theories surrounding who Sex is, how she ended up there, and why she gets caught by the hunter in Little Nightmares 2 while having powers which can drain people from their lives. And also who the lady is, why she wears a mask, and everything else, which we will talk about on a different video. There are three DLCs in a pack called The Secrets of the Maw, which entails the story of another child, this time a boy dubbed as the Runaway Kid. Runaway Kid's story runs parallel to Sex's. The Runaway Kid wakes up similarly like Sex from a nightmare, which he sees himself swimming in darkness before being dragged underwater by a mysterious monster. After leaving the nursery, he witnesses Janitor chasing after an escaping child. The protagonist finds a flashlight from another escaping girl, who he follows for a brief period. The runaway kid finds himself in the depth of the maw which is heavily flooded, where he needs to jump on platforms to avoid being dragged by a mysterious creature under the water. It turns out that the depths are home to the granny, the creature under the water. The runaway kid manages to push a TV into the water and presumably electrocuting the granny. As the runaway kid climbs on a tall wooden ladder, he then gets caught by the janitor and put in a cage next to Six. The janitor pulls the runaway kid cages away, paralleling Six's campaign just before she wakes up and breaks the cage. The runaway kid is then wrapped in a paper being ascended by one of the hooks. He loosens himself up and drops on a new level. In this level, he witnesses the gnomes working by keeping the furnace of the maw running. With the help of the gnomes, he manages to ascend to another level using a bucket lift. When he gets to the new level, he witnesses some of the gnomes standing in front of a different furnace, which light casts a shadow behind the gnomes 
in the shape of children. After leaving the area through a crack, the runaway kid finds himself on top of an elevator the lady is standing in. After leaving the elevator, the runaway kid enters the lady's residence, including her portraits. The runaway kid is then attacked by some shadow figures resembling children wearing a porcelain mask. The runaway kid destroys them by shining the flashlight on them. The runaway kid then finds the lady looking at herself in the mirror, which reveals to us that she has a deformed and grotesque face. The lady then is alerted to the runaway kid's presence and turns him into a gnome. He then finds himself in a guest room. With a sausage lying around in the middle, he approaches the sausage and the screen fades to black, implying that he is indeed the gnome that Six eats after she escapes the horde of guests and has another bout of hunger. There is eventually shown to be a television set which shows a figure reminiscent of the Thin Man, which we are going to face in The Little Nightmares 2. This sheds even more light on the gravity of the event that Six ate a gnome. She ate a runaway kid like herself. The hypocrisy is great here and makes you consider if sex is any better than the gluttonous guests. Sex has a choice to eat a sausage, but instead chooses to eat a living gnome, who turned out to be another protagonist of ours in the DLC. Wow, this game was simply brilliant, yet troubling. This brings us to the end of the video folks, that was certainly some heavy ending. Thanks for watching the video and hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your one and only host R and I hope to see you again very soon. Take care.